I want to show you how quick and easy it can be to get up and running for doing Python scripting in Vasari and Revit using uh, Darren Thomas's lovely Revit Python shell. Uh, this is an installer for Vasari, and uh, I've already downloaded the Python shell from uh, Google Code and Iron Python from the Iron Python site. And all I'm going to do is just going to really quickly. I'm going to install Iron Python, which is the .NET implementation of Python. And you'll see Shazam, we're all done. That's all you need for Iron Python. And then to run the actual installer for the plugin to do the Python scripting, you just do it. Off you go to the races. Actually, even takes less time than starting up Vasari. So I'm going to pause when I start up Vasari. Um, one other thing that I've got here is I've downloaded my own um, set of scripts, which are a combination of stuff that um, Aki helped me put together, and I'm going to point to him a little later on, and uh, something that I downloaded from Darren's site, which is just a, a sample script for exporting images, and a couple of other things that I'm just going to show you some sort of uh, scripting toys that. Uh, I've put together with some help with some other people. Uh, so that's there on my desktop as well. And I'm just going to fire up Vasari. Give it a little pause. And here we are. We've got our Vasari environment open. And I'm just going to go over and I'm going to start up a mass environment just because there's some more fun things I can do there. I'm going to go new, hey, new family. You don't have to do this. You can do this in the regular project environment. But some of the toys I'm going to show are are better in the masking environment. So over here in add-ins now what I've got is I've got a Revit Python shell installed um, and it has two buttons open Python shell and configure. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to configure this because it needs a little tweaking to get ready. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a search path and what this is going to do is I'm going to add uh, a component from um, Iron Python that allows autocomplete and I'll show you what that is in a minute. Now if I just go and I find where I installed Iron Python right there. If I add the library lib and just go OK and what that's going to do is it's going to allow uh, the Python script engine to go and search the Revit API and autocomplete for when I'm actually going and I'm doing scripting. We can see that in a minute, but I'm just going to add that path in there. And I'm also going to go in and I'm going to add some of those toys that I was pointing to earlier. Um, where are those guys? That are on my desktop, which are the Pi samples. So these are the little scriptlets that um, I've compiled. They're not even compiled, they're scripts. They're not compiled. So I'm going to add these guys in also. So these are going to be preloaded commands I'm going to have when I go and fire up Vasari again. So this is sort of the first time I'm starting it up, so I just need to do a little configuring. So I'm going to add, and I'm going to go to that spot on my desktop where I've downloaded these samples. And I'm going to add these guys, and I'm going to call this test. So this is basically a little script that just allows me to experiment, um, create points, which is a script that is doing just that. It's creating points uh, using some math. And I'm going to add the create surface, which is sort of a rejiggered version of um, rejiggered version of Nathan Miller's uh, super shape script. It's just sort of simplified. Thank you, Nathan. Create surface, and what else have I got in here? Export image, which is just a little example that allows you to do just that. Export an image, and this is one of Darren's. Uh, samples. And then this last one, Goal Seeker, which is uh, one of the parametric patterns that I've discussed in other posts to uh, sort of do some more complex calculations inside of uh, inside of Vasari. That was put together by Aki. Thank you, Aki. I'm going to call that Goal Seeker. And that's it. So I've added the search path that goes and finds this library. And I've added commands, which basically allows me to load up those pre-configured um, scripts. And I'm going to save that. And it's going to say, you need to restart Revit to see the changes. OK, fine. So I've just got these two buttons right now. And I'm going to shut down. And I'm going to restart. And we'll see what we get. 
So I'm going to pause you again while we wait for Vasari to reload. And then after I do this, we can do some live editing. So there, five minutes to get up and running. And uh, one restart. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go again back to my mass environment. And again, you can do this stuff in the other environment. There's just some better toys for the mass environment. So if I go back over to my add-ins tab, I've got rather than Python shell here, and now it's populated with those little test scripts that I put together. And it also has some special secret sauce in it from adding that uh, iron Python pathway. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to open up a couple of my Python files. So I've got, uh, let's see, I've got create points. I'm going to open this. And what am I going to open it with? Hold on one second. Okay, because I haven't opened these yet, I need to actually assign it something it can open with. I'm going to go open. I'm going to select a program. And let's see if I can get, well, heck, I could do it in just a notepad. Let's just do that. It's going to look a little ugly, but if you've got something that's a better script editor, you can use that. But basically what I've got here is I've got um, a relatively simple script that does, um, basically it creates a bunch of points and it creates a bunch of points using a little bit of math to do it. So again, I'm not really a coder. I don't really do this stuff. Um, a friend of mine helped me figure out some of this stuff, but now I know how to monkey with it. So um, if I go in and I'm gonna open up, let's see, create points, there we go. So what this one does is that this is just a little Python script that uh, imports a math library and uh, a couple of commands from Revit. And then it starts a transaction. And then during this transaction, what it does is that it creates a bunch of points. And it creates a bunch of points where it cr creates them using this math to set them down. And again, not really conversant in this stuff, but enough to sort of get myself in trouble. So I'm just going to do this. I'm going to move this guy over a little bit. I'm going to move this scroll over a little bit. And what I've got here is I've got my script. And I'm just going to I'm going to play this script essentially. I'm going to go down in here and I'm going to say create points. This is my create points Python script. I'm going to create points. And it runs its little script. And there it is. And I've got a whole stack of points. Yay. So each one of these points is following this formula, which is basically, uh, I think it's, it's a sine curve and a uh, cosine curve to do the x and the y and then there's another little thing that um, decides what the z coordinate is and what I can do is I say okay well this this little helical form is tall well and good but what I'd really rather have is I'd rather have something that's twice as tall okay well I know how to do that I can go into my math where I see I've got my x my y, and then here's my z over here, which is variable x, and I can just make it twice as tall. So I can go, let's see if this works, 2 times x. I think that'll work. And now I'm just going to go I'm gonna save, and now I'm going to run it again. And there they are. There's my helix that is twice as tall. Yay. Um, so the other things, you know, I've got, there's a bunch of other scripts in here, and you can play around with them. Um, here's create surface, which is kind of fun. And create surface is, do, 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 do. there it is. Creates my little surface. Again, this is another formula driven shape. So if I open up my create surface, I can see what that little scriptlet is. And again, I've got a little piece of math in here, so I can go and I can change some piece of the math in here. And I go file, save, and I'm going to run my create surface again, and shazam kapow, it's going to take a little while because, you know, Vasari and Revit are like that, and there I've got my altered form, so I've got my first one and my second one right there, where are you, there you are, the other thing I want to show you, and again, you know, I, I feel like a bit of an amateur on this because I am, um, I'm not a coder, but I can show you that one of the things that you can do here is you can open the Python shell. And remember when we added that path that went back in and looked for the library?
for the Iron Python, what that was doing is it was basically getting um, an autocomplete script running on here, which if I go doc, let's see, and then hit tab, what it's going to do is it's doing the initial loading up of that library. And what you're going to be able to get after it initially loads is you're going to get the ability to basically search the whole Revit API and get autocomplete commands here so that you can start off a command and you can know basically where you're looking and then it will come up with the rest of the information of where you need to look to to complete your command. And the first time it loads is pretty slow but you know then I can say okay if I'm opening up a doc statement these are the other possible ends of the command that I can do. So let's say what I'm actually wanting to do is I want to do a doc um, new is it doc new? What is it? No. It's doc fam, I think. Yeah. Family create. And I think I want to create reference points, but I can't quite remember how it goes. It's ref something. Let's see what autocomplete comes up with. Nope. Anyway, you get the idea. I don't really know what I'm doing with this stuff, but maybe you do, and then you can make wonderful things with it. And then you can upload this stuff back onto Darren's site and contribute back to this open source project, which is what this is, um, created by users and edited by users. So uh, give this stuff a shot, see how you like it, give some feedback to Darren, and make good stuff. And I hope that helps you get up and running on this stuff. Thank you.